Hey everybody, welcome back to my layout. This will be a layout update video for August 2020. In this update, we'll take a look at the three finished signals for the first control point on the layout. And I'll do a quick review of the Fast Tracks Ultimation Sander with repeater attachment. So pretty much the only thing I worked on this past month was getting these three signals built for the control point which is called Banff West here on my layout. It's a real control point on the Lagan subdivision for Canadian Pacific. So these three signals are part of a CTC control point at the uh, railway west end of Banff Yard. And they're really kind of three unique Canadian signals and uh, I've tried to recreate each one as faithful to the prototype as possible using those showcase miniatures signal kits that I showed you guys last month. So these are the first showcase miniatures kits I built so there's a pretty steep learning curve. One thing that just surprised me you know you you see the signals on the prototype when you're out watching trains or whatever and you know they always seem so big and tall but really they're not very big at all when you break them down to HO scale you know you think the signals not usually taller than an engine so they end up being uh, you know there's not a lot to them I've included a dime here just to kinda show how small these things are especially the dwarf one here that uh, manages the entrance to the passing track at Banff West so the only thing left to do on this one I've gotta add the uh, the number board is down I think it's actually in between the two lights on this one there's also a conduit that runs down out the side of it so I'll put that on uh, once it's installed in the layout all I did was use the same showcase miniatures heads that I used for the the tall searchlights and then they just have these dwarf hoods I did have to do a little bit of grinding on the top one here and obviously I drilled out the bottom one so I could get the lights through them of course this is a unique signal that's installed on this concrete uh, kind of trapezoid shaped pedestal it's a really unique feature of the Banff Yard and if anyone has been there I'm sure you've seen taken a look at this signal it's really cool it's got a small ladder on the back I'll show you the back side of it so it's a really unique uh, signal head the concrete base I actually um, I used my ultimation sander and we'll talk about that after this but uh, it worked really well to make this and uh, use that trusty old piece of hardboard that I've got with my flooring at our old house and it's uh, really like a high density MDF and it's great for stuff like this alright the next single after that is the this is 821 which is on the main line this is on the platform at Banff, um, you know, again, just like the, the dwarf signal there. If you've been to Banff and watched trains, you've probably seen this, this signal. It's been there forever. It's at the very west end of the platform, and it's a unique uh, signal because it has the sloped ladder at the back, which is kind of unique. Um, it doesn't have a straight up and down ladder like a lot of them do. And it has a GRS head on top and a union switch and signal light on the bottom. That's the union switch and signal head. You can see it's got those extra supports on the target and the GRS head up on top does not. And looking at the front of the signal, you can see it's got the different hood on the union switch and signal head, different style of, uh, of hood on the light. This one's almost done. I still need to, just like the dwarf, I gotta make the number board for this one. So it's got a little tiny 821 um, vertically on the, uh, the side of the signal head. So, Still need to do that, but it's otherwise it's finished. And the last signal is the 822 signal. This is a diverging signal at Banff West. So this is for eastbounds, and it's right after the 40 Mile Creek Bridge. This is a taller signal. You can tell the uh, 821 here is a, about a 17 foot. This is a 20 foot mast. It's got the vertical ladder, just like the prototype. It's got the DV plaque and two GRS hoods. So here's the backside view of it and just like um, the other signals I you know I worked off of prototype pictures try to get the ladders and uh, you know supports everything as accurate as possible I really tried to uh, to get as close as I could so I'm really excited to get these things installed on the layout these are an incredible amount of work um, you know especially if you're making your own tricolor LEDs like me really looking forward to the finished product and seeing these things lit up and seeing a highball at BAMP for the first time it's gonna be awesome so one other quick thing while we're still talking about signals um, I was talking about the the concrete pedestal for the dwarf signal there so these uh, these are the supports for both 821 and 822 so you know working off prototype pictures 821 sits on these kinda like they kinda look like those concrete 
parking lot bumpers you know you see in a parking stall and uh, these it sits on two of these whereas the 822 signal sits on a larger big huge piece of concrete uh, so I, I used uh, MDF and again used my ultimation sander that I got from Fast Tracks to uh, to sand it down and you can really the nice thing about that ultimation sander and we'll, we'll take a look um, right after this but uh, you can do some really fine work like this is uh, you know the angles are all the same here's the dime just to show the scale there and uh, it's it's amazing the amount of precision work you can do with that so yeah this is just a chunk of MDF um, rough rough sanded down into that kind of trapezoid shape with the ultimation sander and then I hit it with like some 1500 grit uh, auto paper to kind of smooth it out and then you get a really kind of realistic looking uh, concrete uh, base for signals so let's go take a look at that ultimation sander so I apologize in advance for the uh, mess here on the work desk but hey, this is how you know that uh, I've actually put the thing to use right so that concrete base for the signal that we were looking at there this is the uh, the aftermath of making one of those and in hindsight I probably could have cut the wood down smaller first but uh, that's how you learn, well, that's how I learn anyway um, so here's uh, what I used MDF and the first one I did I learned you should use a bigger piece and uh, that gives you something to hold on to so I sanded it down um, you know got the top the perfect dimensions that I wanted using the caliper and measuring the bottom of the signal bases and then it was just a matter of just sanding it like this and then when it was to the perfect dimensions I just cut the uh, the top of it off with my chop saw so it's really cool that you can do kind of really complicated shapes like this um, quickly and like really square and precise using this uh, ultimation sander from Fast Track. so it's really kind of the first wooden scratch building stuff I've been doing on the layout so this uh, this sander has been super handy for that and I haven't even got into anything with fixed angles yet uh, I've just been free like freestyling with this um, you know just doing it by hand so I'm actually going to save all this sawdust too I'll use that for scenery stuff later so this thing is just hand powered it's got a little crank here and it's got quite a bit of weight to it so it does uh, it does freewheel but uh, you pretty much have to be giving it uh, hand cranking power the whole time so you're getting quite a bit of friction when you're sanding stuff on here so the angle adjustment here is here you can do a little over between 0 and 90 I think uh, in the range so I've got 120 grit I think they're 5 inch discs for this I mean I'm, I haven't used it enough that I've burned through any but I got a couple extra I also got this uh, the repeater tool to go with it I figured uh, if you're gonna get this thing it's already pretty expensive like I, th I think it was around 250 bucks so it's a pretty expensive little hand tool um, and this was of course extra but uh, from what I've seen online um, this is a super useful tool as well I really look forward to trying this thing out and what basically what this thing does is it's an attachment you put on here and you make kind of a masterpiece set this thing up and then you can just repeat and just crank out the same piece so if you're doing like I'm thinking off the top of my head um, uh, like decorative supports for station overhangs uh, bridge timbers snow sheds all kinds of things um, I think this is gonna be a really kinda of great tool this thing is built like super solid um, it's actually really nice really really nicely built it's very heavy everything is is solid on it so I think it's kind of once you buy one of these you'll have it forever type thing you just change the disc out every once in a while and that'll be it so but I just wanted to show you guys that quick um, I mean I've used it to make a couple things now and I, I really like it and I think I'm going to be using it a lot more in the future so definitely a useful tool to have on the layout well that'll be it for this layout update guys apologize for the lack of content over the last month um, we've been just super busy outside and kind of enjoying the really really nice weather we've been having up here in sunny central Alberta so it's been great hoping to spend more time down here over the next month and then definitely going into fall and winter I uh, really want to kind of get going on the signals here I'm excited to you know see what those are going to look like and kind of add that next level of animation to the layout that's kind of lacking right now so that's what I'm going to be working on in the uh, upcoming months I hope you guys had an awesome summer and uh, kind of going into harvest here so Good luck to all those farmers out there. The crops are awesome around here, so that's really great news for those guys. As always, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.